good family. How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? What's up? What's up? Yes. Happy Tuesday. Yeah, man. We back with another episode of our interview series. Man, this one, we got a good one today. Yes, we do. I'm super excited because I've heard so many phenomenal things about our guest that's coming up here. So I want to get in tune with the with the strategies and all of that. So I'm excited. Yeah, man. So this this one is again, it was always good to be back. First and foremost, listen, if you uh shout out everybody on Facebook, <coughs> LinkedIn, YouTube. Make sure you do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right. Make sure you like us on Facebook and share this video on all platforms. We truly appreciate you. Uh, man, we looking forward to, to getting things done. And it looks like we just got our friends coming back to do more construction tonight. So we will probably do some. Uh, oh, that they want to hear, baby. <laughs> you see, y'all, y'all, the funny thing, I hope y'all heard on the mic. I, was like, I, wish I told you trying to talk under her teeth. You know what I'm saying? But no, nah, listen, y'all. Again, we super excited. So before we get this thing started, listen, man, first time tapping in, my name Byron. I'm Sharnice, and we're the Mobile Home Elite Investors, where we talk about all things mobile home investing. And like Byron said, we got a phenomenal guest coming on here that's going to talk about all things mobile home investing. So you definitely want to tap in, take notes, and we're going to jump right into it. And real quick, if you're on Facebook, I know they were saying that you may not be able to comment. So just want to throw that out there just in case. Or if you do comment, we may not see it. Yeah. So just come over here and jump on on YouTube with us. So that way you get the full engagement. Before we get started, let me see where y'all checking in from. Drop in the comments. Let me know where y'all checking in from. Like I said, Facebook, we may not be able to see your comments. All right. But yeah. What's up, Larry? How you feeling? How you What's feeling going today? On? Let's see. Let me see where y'all checking in from. Drop in the comments. We checking in from Chicago where it is a cold, rainy day. We- it is where it was just 80 degrees one day and now it's back down to 50. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So wait, see where y'all checking in from. And then after that, I'm going to need y'all to warm this boy up so we can bring on our guests. So let me know. Let me see where y'all checking in from. I see some people tapping in. Go ahead and yeah, drop in. We got a few more people tapping in. Yeah, drop in the comments. Facebook, if you're on here, I can't see you. So you may have to come over here and jump on to the yes. YouTube. Just join us on YouTube. Right, we man. can be engaged. Awesome. That's awesome. good to hear, Miss Lyra. Yes. So it may, I think our comments may be a little bit slow, but it's cool. It's cool, right? Because normally what I want them to do is warm it up so we can bring mm-hmm. our guests on, right? So we can have them fire signs. But without further ado, man, we 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 gotta go bring this young king up, man. Listen. Hope y'all ready. Like Sharni said, take some good notes. Man, listen, I am I am super excited. All right, we got one of the fellow alums on here. Let, without further ado, let, let's bring up Darian Dixon, man. Go ahead. Let, show some love in the comments. What's up, Darian? How you feeling, man? Hello, hello, everybody. Feeling good. Thank you for having me. Oh, nice, man. nice. It's, it's a blessing to have you here. Um, you know, we we, we you want to dive right into it? Yeah, let's get the people what they've been waiting for. So listen, Darian, tell us your background. Who is Darian? Tell us your background story. Born and raised in Baltimore City, Maryland. Uh, West Baltimore City to be very specific. Right now, I'm living in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I made my way to North Carolina because of grad school. So I saw in the promo, y'all said, yep. Yeah, Y'all put my business in the street. I'm out here to get my PhD in sociology right now. And, <laughs> and come May 2023, I'll be graduated. That's that's the plan. So almost hey, done. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I love it, man. So I love it. So, you know, you you talk about, you know, again, making the move to North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, right? And you are um, in a place where there's a lot of mobile homes. So it leads me to my next question. Like, how did you even get introduced to, to mobile home investing? My first introduction came purely through my then girlfriend, now fiance. So we were watching Earn Your Leisure and this was, y'all been on twice now, correct? And she put me on the first time y'all want you on, 
And she showed me what y'all were doing. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. But this was like early 2021, if I remember correctly, or maybe late 2020. But when she first brought it up to me, I was like, okay. All right, let's see what's, what this is. She brought the course first. Like she bought the um she bought one of the first iterations of y'all course. Okay, shout out she to was Beyonce. Doing of, yeah, she was doing a little bit of it and she said, Yeah, let's you know, let's both do this together and we can try it out. Then we kind of fell off on that the first time we did it. And then she went into a different route with um, Airbnb. She has her own business and all that good stuff. And I can not all that information off air. Well, maybe on it, I don't know. But <laughs> when she made the decision to go to short-term rental route with apartments and, and that sort, I was like, hold up, though. What if we really, really go hard into our own individual lanes where you take care of doing your Airbnb business? And then what if I really go full on into mobile home investing? And specifically going through mobile home lead investors and like doing the course, just really going for it, right? And October 2021 was when I was actually putting y'all steps into action. And I got my LLC, I got my business bank account, I got um and my Dun and Bradstreet number, I got all the business foundation stuff to you. And it was such a surreal moment where October 2021, I was like, all right, I'm gonna take that real leap. I got into your Facebook group, the um, like the main group for all the uh, investors. And I was like, here and there saying, hey, I'm doing this, that, and the third. So if you go back, you're gonna see my name a couple of times saying, hey, how <laughs> I, what, what am I supposed to do now? Or I just did this, now what? And then, I get to August of 2022, and that was when I decided to actually buy the course, uh, the Elite Fast Track course. I have the six month course, and going the deepest dive I could go, getting that accountability, coaching, and community is a mad genius. Amazing. I'm so glad that I got to learn and I'm still learning as much as I can with with Nicole and also with the group. And now I'm in the the I like I'm in the thick of it, in the weeds of my first deal because of everything that I learned from y'all and the fast track course and literally just following instructions. That's what it really all boils down to. Y'all already did it and did it well. <laughs> and y'all are showing us what to do. So we just gotta do it. So that's that's how we're here now. Man, that's dope, man. I love yeah. it. I love it, man. Like, you know, first and foremost, shout out to you, man. You know, being, you know, the king, um, you know, with, with your queen and, you know, like seeing her being even motivated, watching her do it, you know, what she's done. Um, and then, you know, being able to, you know, I love hearing it for you. Like, look, at, look, babe, like, let me go ahead and do this and then we can put this together, right? That's that's strong man okay look at that partnership and love I see. yeah that's what we all also, about she, she just commented brian thompson that's my fiance hey okay <laughs> shout out yeah. shout, shout out the fiance what's up right. <laughs> hey girl hey yes we gotta shout you out for introducing your man to us <laughs> <laughs> she put me on she put me yes. it wasn't for her i don't know we wouldn't be having this conversation i'm gonna be keeping a stack she, I, she love it. I love it. I love it, man. I know she over there just she's so proud, you know. <laughs> right. That's my man right there. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Hey, you see, look, she repping. She said that's yeah. my fiance. Yeah. That's okay, okay. let them know. Let them know, girl. Yeah. They're gonna be sweating me real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dope, man. I love it. I love it. So, man, you know, kind of going back to it. Again, you had you made the move. You're in Raleigh, North Carolina. You're going, you're getting your PhD. How are you able to balance, man, getting your PhD <laughs> and then doing mobile home okay. investing? Like, talk to the people about that. Yeah, bro. let's talk about time management. <laughs> oh, man. So 
I've ever since really ever since elementary school, I've been used to doing school and then something else. So it was always like school, uh, sport, and then art. And I was just used to, to just all, right? So all through elementary school, middle school, high school, college, and now grad school, every single thing that's like, honestly, school feels like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to excel at it. But that's not the end all be all. And I'm always thinking of doing something else where it's either sports, arts. Um, so when it comes to like time management, it's not so much me managing it and trying to stay within a strict schedule and trying to make sure I do all of the things correctly in a given day. There's more just flowing and letting time just be and just letting myself just be. So at, at the core of it, I just choose what I want to do, and then I do it. And sometimes I'm not really thinking about the time. So like, cause we have the same 24 hours every day, right? So at the very end of the day, it's set your priorities, and then tend to your priorities. And then think about it. I like to think about, honestly, my life as like being a farmer, where farmers that grow a whole bunch of different crops and stuff, you got to manage corn, let's say you're growing corn, watermelon, cabbage, um, beans, and all that good stuff. Every single thing requires a different uh, amount of attention. Every single thing requires a different tool, a different resource, a different strategy, technique. But if the mindset is whatever I nurture will grow, then I'm going to nurture my priorities. I'm going to nurture the things that actually bring me fulfillment. And... I just made one of those things be more home investing. But the thing is, it's not just about the investing part of it. Because a lot of people, when you think about investing, you only think about money. But a lot of it boils down to helping somebody else. Now, when you think about housing, housing is one of the most primal needs of human beings, right? So if there's a way where I can help somebody else get housing, not just for themselves, but like for their family or something like that, that's really important. That's really dope to be able to do that. And then to, um, you know, help people in ways that they would expect. And I can speak more about that with the ins and outs of what I've been doing, like living in mobile home investing now. But the time management piece, a lot of times I find people been making sure I do all these things, make sure I meet all these deadlines. And making sure, making sure just that third, instead of just letting stuff flow. And also knowing how to say no. Mm. I've, I've been learning how to say no as well. And Yay. then that says, if I'm saying no to this, then I'm saying yes to that. I love that. That's powerful, though. Learning to say no. Like, that was one of the things I struggled with. Right, learning to say no, right? I'm still getting better at that. Yeah, me um, too. <laughs> you know, just yes, yes, yes. And kind of just, you know, being able and, and I like that because it talks about, you know, you prioritizing yourself first. And that analogy you used about the farmer, man, that was key. That was mm-hmm. key, bro. Like I, I I definitely had to put the gym up. If you're watching this, make sure you go watch that replay and 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 definitely hear what Darren is talking about with the farmers. Yes. So let's talk about, I heard you got a current deal you working on, right? And I heard it's almost at the finish line. So early congrats on that. Yes. So let's talk about what you're working on right now in your mobile home investment journey. Talk about your current deal that you have in process. So the current deal is with a used uh, 1987 two-bedroom, one-bathroom mobile home park. Um it's funny, I got the lead from a band sign that is like an hour and a half away from home. So this is a testament to driving for dollars, just putting the signs where not wherever. When I say wherever, I mean wherever that is where it's close to a mobile home park, where it's close to where you see a lot of mobile homes in the area. Where it's close to where you see residents of um, mobile homes, where it's like, oh yeah, let's put the signs around. 
here. So Brandon sign worked out very well where they called me and said, hey, I have this place to sell. They called me on a Wednesday, excuse me, they called me on a Tuesday and then I scheduled a tour on a Friday. I was like, oh, this is this is going down? Let me go see it in real life. <laughs> you gotta make sure, first of all, this is real. Second of all, you gotta make sure that they actually own it. And if they have the title, dope. Say like, oh, let me see the title that is in your hand. Let me see title in hand for real. And then, you know, verifying doing, doing all your due diligence, but and sign phone call. Now, here's the funny thing. When they first called me, I wasn't able to answer. I was um, spending family time. They called me on a Sunday night. I wasn't going to answer mm-hmm. that. Um, and I called them back uh, Monday. They didn't answer because, I mean, they, they were probably busy working or something. And then Tuesday afternoon, they called me back and I answered. I said, hey, da 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 this is what it is, this is what be. So, Shows the tour. Now, from the tour, we looked at it. He was asking me, you know, like, you know, what what can we do? You think this will sell? And I was like, oh yeah, definitely. He tried to sell it at first. He tried. However, the first person that he tried to sell it to, they they were serious too. Like they gave a five hundred dollar deposit and everything, but then the the potential buyers just disappeared. I don't know what happened. Mm. Regardless, that deal fell through. So him calling me for my bandit sign was legit just, he was like, I don't know what to do because one, now I got two homes and I'm paying two lot rents because he moved out of the home. There was nothing wrong with it. It was just, he needed something bigger. So he left the two bedroom behind and now he has a double wide in another mobile home park. And he's like, yo, I'm paying two lot rents. This is like, this is adding up. I don't, I can't keep doing this. So yeah. I'm here to solve a problem for him. And then also me a need for whoever is going to be available um, to buy it. And everything that we've been going through so far has been really dope. Everything from just him and uh, he and I's communication has been really good, which is amazing. That's what you want for a business deal where yes. everybody yep. involved is communicative and actually, mm-hmm. you know, about it. And it's not just like scam or wishy-washy. Right. So when he texts me, I answer. When I text him, he answer. Same thing with phone calls. And most recently, so this was October 22nd, I had the open house for the um the home that's my first open house this is like i'm working towards my first deal mm-hmm. so the open house was intriguing because only one person showed up however <laughs> but I'm here's the yeah here's the thing only one potential buyer showed up but also this is a testament to support my um my mother she also showed up wow. but she showed up as a potential buyer Right, mm. and she did it where like she wore her like her um, her mask and stuff, right? Um, so they couldn't tell if we looked like <laughs> right. my mom. So, but regardless, my mom, hey. my mom recently moved from Maryland to North Carolina, right? She was like, "Yo, one, this is dope. I want to see you do your first open house. This is amazing. I want to support. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot. Can I come to the open house?" I was like, "Actually, yeah, you can." <laughs> you really can actually because I'm so used to her being hours away but now she's a little bit closer at any rate That's she dope. was a she was a potential buyer here's the thing when people go from when you put out a Facebook ad for example people go from hello is this available okay whatever I found a way to weed that out where it's like okay when people message me about is this available they send me a little message on Facebook I then respond to them with a Google form and from that Google form, it asks for um, name, email address, and phone number. The email and the name, those are required, and the phone number, optional. At any rate, people fill out the Google form, that's a filter where it's like, oh, okay, you're like one step seri- more serious than the person who's just saying auto message. This is available. You're not going to do nothing. But 
the people that I actually got responses from Google Forms and people who ever call me and text me directly to Bandit Signs had their email addresses. And then I created a newsletter and that's connected to like a, just an email list where I can send mass email blasts to people. And that way I don't have to worry about all the Facebook and all that mess, but I have a, like a succinct list of people where I can stay in constant contact with them anytime I have something that's available to buy, to sell, or for rent. Now, I marketed the open house to my email list. From the email Ooh. list, there was, Ooh. what, six people who were, like, actually interested? And of those six, I was predicting, I was like, of the ten who were mostly interested, and then the six that I actually emailed, I'm going to give two. Only got one, but here's the thing: you only need one buyer. You only need one. Thanks. Just one. That's you all. Just need me. one. So, with all that being said, though, my mother was dope. She was really like the way she supported me through that whole process. Here's the thing: it was a two-hour open house, and nobody showed up for two hours. I was just sitting at the front door. <laughs> yeah, for, company. Yeah, I, I mean, I was so my mother she didn't come into like an hour in, but regardless, if my mother didn't show up, I would have been there for two hours until what I did was I went back to my email to make sure the email that I had sent, you know, actually sent and stuff. I double checked and triple checked, and then I just sent out a follow up message to say, Hey, are you still coming? Or, you know, are you still gonna make it? That one person said, oh, yeah, I was waiting for the email to um, come through to give me the address. When I tell you, my heart stopped just a little bit. <laughs> what you mean? It didn't, what you mean you've been waiting? What you mean? I sent it. I didn't want it. So <laughs> as it turned out, the email sent. The technology didn't fail on my end. It was just wherever she was, the signal didn't um, catch, and she didn't get the email until whenever she got out of whatever the dead zone for the phone signal. At any rate, she pulled up. She was she was like, oh yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. I said, you will? <laughs> hey, <laughs> you said hey, I'm be here. I've been here for two hours, but I can stay here for another 20 minutes. Come on. Now, when she pulled up, it was just uh, myself and my mother, and we were just on the porch. We were talking as if, you know, she was a potential buyer and she was actually going to tour the home and stuff. When the uh, when the person pulled up, she parked. She saw I me and my mother in deep discussion about the home. And then the the uh, person was like, they didn't know if they should come out or not because they weren't sure if it was going to be one person at a time. At any rate, I was like, yeah, yeah, come on. So I gave the tour to both of them. I'm marketing the home to both of them. And my mother is playing along as if she's on also looking to buy the home but the person who's actually the potential buyer she saw my mother as like competition like healthy competition yeah, as well. so uh, in line with um, Nicole taught us in our, in our class he's like having these open houses it's important for you to have as many people as possible um, to be there because there's like some there's some healthy competition there's a little bit of uh there was a bit of anxiety that builds up where it's like, oh, wait a minute, we got to submit an offer. We got to, you know, this is a hot commodity. So having love there was crucial. Yo. Man, we're in the middle of it and looking to close the deal. Ideally this week, I'm um, still going to do some due diligence for making sure that one, if she buys it, she wants to move the home from away, away from the park. So I got to do due diligence, making sure one, that there aren't any taxes owed um from the seller standpoint because they bought the home from somebody else um back in 2020 so just like backtracking and double checking the department of motor vehicle and um like tax offices for the county making sure that stuff is squared away there's no uh back rent oh it said the rent is up to date and has proof of that and then making sure that with the management it is okay to remove the home from the park because with some parks if you move into the park, you have to stay there for at least one year before you can move. I've come across that twice. I'm just talking to park managers. And 
then we gotta make sure that we have the permit to actually move the home. So all that is brewing as we speak. I love it, man. Yo, like, first of all, right? I'm like, so much to unpack there. Oh, man. Listen, <laughs> listen. When I tell you, you drop so many gems, you probably dropped that amount of gems that I'm putting on this screen right now. Be yes. like, like, I'm talking about the, <laughs> the play, the play with moms. And, I, and, I, and I'm going to tell y'all, I got to excuse if y'all hit a background noise. I guess they just only do construction at our office on Tuesdays. <laughs> yes, which I told you. <laughs> I'm going to get Byron once we hop off of this, y'all. I just want y'all to know this. <laughs> Um, but anyway, you know, but, uh, but no, man, I mean, the, you know, the whole, that's a play, like, you know, oh, having, it's, it's so much. I want to, we talked about mama came to show up and support. Now you got the buyer looking at mama, like, hold on now. This is my house. Ooh, who is this? Driving the prices up. Yes. I love it. I love it. Then I think Nicole put in the comments about how you'll hit the streets just like we used to. How far is this house again? So it is exactly like according to ways, like an hour and 19 minutes, so to speak, hour and half, a, hour and a half in traffic. Nice, nice. I love it. Getting on the road to find the deals. Yeah. So that's super dope. Nice, cool. So listen, I know when you first got into mobile home investing, right? We know it's a lot of stigmas. It's so much that, you know, people just put in their minds about what this business will really entail. But what's one thing that you about mobile home investing that you didn't expect? I didn't expect to come across mobile home parks that look like suburban oases. Oasis's, Oasis's. Um, there was this one mobile home park that's about an hour or so away. And if you didn't know any better, you would legit think it's just straight up suburbia. And like mm -hmm. the, um, there's the, not the shingles, the, the siding, like the um, yeah. un underneath vinyl siding is like faux brick and faux stone. And if you, if you legit didn't know any better, you would think, Oh snap! These are all like one-story single-family homes, low key. Wow. Yeah. So I, yeah. I wasn't expecting to to see that. Like I was, ex I wasn't, and I even wasn't, I wasn't even expecting like eight-mile trailer parks either. Like I wasn't expecting. Mm. Though they do exist, and I came across <laughs> a couple, and I was like. The people living here don't even want to live here. Let me let me reverse. Let me, let me get about here. <laughs> That's but facts. I genuinely didn't expect to see mobile home parks that look like suburban resorts. Like I was like, yo, these are genuinely nice. Yeah. Like these are genuinely beautiful communities. And it's also dope. The the uh like the tight knit community. And that's also, here's a, a key point with, while I was at the mobile home park for two hours, <laughs> mm -hmm. just sitting and just listening and just observing the community, like I saw just neighbors talking to each other. Like I saw people going over to each other's houses and people just, you know, stopping in the street and just talking, just chopping it up. And just like the amount of community that's there um, and and at, at that particular part was just beautiful to see as well. I'm I'm not sure I was really expecting that, but I wasn't not expecting it, but it was still just nice to see. It was a nice unexpected surprise, I guess. Man, that's yeah, I get that. I feel like that's how we were in the beginning mm -hmm. of our journey. I think we had this stigma of like a mile and everything that we saw on TV, but then once we start doing business in one of our main parks in the beginning, it definitely looks like a <laughs> suburban neighborhood. Like yeah. you wouldn't even think that these houses are actual trailers. They look like single family homes, like you're talking about. So I love that. Yeah, and you touched on the community aspect. You know, I think that. Um, a lot of times in those communities, you know, you, you talk about some people may look at, you know, unfortunately stereotype or things like that. So it's one of those like we all we got. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to have that that tight knit community, um, you know, like I said, it just it just makes it even better, especially investing in providing affordability, man. So 
Nah, I love it, man. Again, you you dropping so much on it. So let me ask you this, man. This is what would you say is one underrated tool that we use in mobile home investing that Brandon you really signs. To use? Branded signs. Branded signs. Ooh, signs. He, he said, hands down. Branded I never down. expected so many people to call my phone. A random phone number. That is a Google Voice number with the area code as um, it's 424. That's Comp in California. <laughs> what? I, what? I genuinely was like, I'm going to have a Google Voice number. I'm going to just put it on the sign. I know it's confident, but it's whatever. <laughs> right. I'm going to just put it out there and see what happened. Yo, people really be, <laughs> my hotline really be playing. What? Yeah. Just off of a sign on a telephone pole at a stop sign at somebody cross from. That's people amazing. really be calling me. <laughs> here's the thing. I will... Um, all right, so here's a fun fact about me. I am multilingual, so nice. uh, native. my native language is English, but I also speak Spanish and Portuguese. Wow. Mm. So the, also the number of calls that I get of people just straight up asking about, you know, buying a home, just straight up flat out in Spanish, that is dope because now I'm a connector. Because yeah. yep. you're paying for mobile home parks that have management that don't speak English, or don't have any um, English resource, uh, excuse me, most of their resources are English only, I can help, I can be that translator. And mm -hmm. then also, and this is the dopest thing. So there was this one, I wanna say maybe like two weeks ago, maybe it's uh, a week and a half ago. Somebody uh, called me from a man sign call, just, <laughs> hey, how you doing? He called me, right? Listening to his accent, I could tell English was not his first language. It was like we were kind of struggling through the conversation. And I was like, okay, we can, we can keep going in English. We got most of the information down. Mm -hmm. We chatted it up. Cool. The next time I call him, as a follow up, just to be like, hey, I have this and the third, what's going on? We're talking. And I was like, in my mind, I know his. Native language is in English, but I also know that his native language isn't Spanish. Mm. And this is just from like language learning and understanding mm -hmm. different accents of people who are speaking English and like being able to trace their uh, native language. Anyway, oh. I can go on for a whole hour about that. <laughs> I asked him, hey, what's your native language? He said, oh, Portuguese. I'm from Portugal. Oh, he went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when, he went, I, okay. when I tell you I lit up like a Christmas tree, and he lit up like a Christmas tree. When I started speaking to him in Portuguese, yo, <laughs> yo, game over. I, game over. It was, throw the towel in. I was like, yo, all of this language practice that I've been doing since I was since I was eleven with Spanish, and then since I was nineteen with Portuguese. Like all of it came to a head with Portuguese in that one moment. It was like, yo, I learned another language so that I can help somebody get housing. Hey, you snap, bro. And I didn't even know <laughs> that. You snap. Yo, he was so surprised because he only comes across people in North Carolina who either speak Spanish or English. <laughs> yeah. Nobody Portuguese. Ain't nobody speaking Portuguese <laughs> in North Carolina. What? Yeah. Come on. So, yeah. Let's go, yeah. man. I love it, bro. Like, man, listen, like, if you watching this, first of all, do me a favor. You're on YouTube. Drop them fire signs in the yes. chat. Because, drop man, the fire signs. Drop the gym signs. Because, listen, y'all going to take so many notes when you go back and watch this replay. Because... I got Darian been dropping some heat for y'all, okay? Man, for <laughs> real, bro. And that's why I'm so proud of you because I can't wait, to, you know, again. And the reason why I'm so happy to have you on here wasn't about you doing the deal. It was the fact that how you, you know, more about you balancing your mm -hmm. life and now to, to learn more about what you've been able to do. You know what I'm saying? In the last, man, you know, in this short period of time, I know what you're setting yourself up, right? I know we're going to be talking about you more. So, like, my thing for you, man, like being in this, again, in this time period, like talk about one lesson mobile home investing has taught you that you think everyone should learn from it at some point in their life. Oops. 
I got two things. So first <laughs> thing, you do not have to have everything figured out before you can get started. Mm. That's a bar right there. Because if you wait until you have all your ducks in a row, you'll, you'll just be wasting time. Mm. That's a bar. Mm. <laughs> like, as long as you have at least one duck, like I understand preparation and making sure you you do have some of direction. But if you wait until you get a dozen ducks in a row before you start, ah, you played yourself. <laughs> you played yourself. And if you really, now this leads into the second lesson, if you really need that many ducks before you get started to be in a row, that's when you need to get accountability, coaching, and community. Mm. When I tell you <laughs> about y'all and the fast track program with Nicole, I'm not having this conversation with y'all. Mm. And, I, and without uh, Brianne put me on from jump, and without God, I'm not here. So. <laughs> Man, man. <laughs> the coach says. You, see, you, see, you see what Nicole said. You said you were pressing. You were pressing in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's some bars. I hope everybody takes heed to that because I feel like when people start, especially mobile home investing, because it's so unique from like typical investing, especially with real estate, I feel that people just automatically want to know everything. Like they want to know the Z. Like Give me uh -huh. the, give me the Z. I need to know everything. I need to know contracts. I need to know everything, the legalization and the rules and regulations with the park. But it's like, you ain't even drove from, drove for dollars. You ain't never been in a mobile home. You don't even know what the smell of a mobile home is. Like, let's go back to the basics now. Ooh, don't smells. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to make sure that you can get past the smells. Because some of y'all may walk in and be like, oh, no, this ain't for me. Uh-uh. Like Not this smell. and cats. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, we got to put this claim in. Not all mobile homes smell bad, all right? It's, the, it's just the ones that it, you get. The ones that's been sitting for a while. I, I will say not all of them smell bad, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but if you a newbie going in, you just gotta, you know, take precaution, put yeah. a mask on. <laughs> and and really, you know, when we talk about, you know, I like how well when you talked about talking about having all your ducks in a row. I'm gonna speak to that real quick, right? Because what happens is the reason why most people want to know everything up front or want to know all of this information, right? It's because that's fear. That's their fear kicking in and saying that you need to know everything. You need mm -hmm. to know everything, right? And it's just a fear of not knowing and the fear of failure that starts to set in. So now you're thinking like, okay, when I know everything, now the next fear is, well, what if I mess up, right? And so you're going to mm -hmm. keep on having the fear if you don't necessarily put yourself out there. And what the, mm -hmm. and what happens is the more you do, when you if when you do or if you mess up, that's just the lesson that you learn. Okay. Okay, now I know what not to do. Let me do this again, right? And so, man, I love the fact that you, you know, how you stressed that point, man. That was huge. Yeah, there's, I, I, I'm, I think this is a quote by James Baldwin. I think it is. If not, um, somebody can fact check me. But it's like the more you do, the more you realize you're capable of. So, like with certain you just won't know until you go. Like you genuinely won't know until you call that first mobile home park. You genuinely won't know until you drive through that first mobile home park. You genuinely won't know until you talk to one of the community members at that mobile home park. You genuinely won't know until you go. So the more you go, the more you realize like, oh snap, I can keep going. Facts. That's facts. That's a fact, man. Man. So you kind of touched on it, a, 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 you know, I feel like throughout this, but like, how has investing in your education helped you in your journey? Like, talk about that. Me going into grad school genuinely was just like a, a car for the course. Like, I, because um, 
my junior year of college, I went to University of Maryland College Park. That was when I first discovered that, first of all, graduate school was an option for me. That's when I discovered like what to go to graduate school and what it meant to get a PhD. Because I can tell you right now, in my own family, immediate or extended, I don't know nobody that got PhDs. And even like my neighborhood, people getting PhDs in sociology, that's not a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But getting the PhDs in general, going to graduate school, it's just that was not something I was exposed to before college. Now, taking that into mobile home investing, understanding what my education is, understanding how to communicate effectively through even doing presentations, through writing, through um, understanding how to talk to strangers. I learned that through school. Not everybody learned that. However, making sure that you can communicate effectively, that is the biggest thing that I've taken from my school life and my studies, specifically in sociology, understand how to connect with people, understand how people operate, not just individuals, but also it's like, what are the systems and structures at play? You know, and then also my self-concentration within sociology sociolinguistics. If you ever heard of it, I'd be surprised. I didn't know it existed <laughs> before I started it. At any rate, it's understanding how we use language to navigate our social spaces and social identity. I am, I'm actually teaching a course on that right now with, um, like in school, I have a, well, I got like 40 something students, undergrad course, 200 level, fantastic. At any rate, understanding how to communicate effectively through spoken word, written word, understanding how to speak organize literally anything, like organizing information, organizing my um, notes. I understand how to take notes, what it means to remember dates and, and deadlines and stuff, allowing my time to flow, but also being able to like, oh yeah, I remember what I did on uh, October 5th because I wrote it down in my notebook and it's on my Google Calendar. Because I'm organized. So organization, understanding how to communicate effectively, and understanding how to talk to strangers and communicate complex ideas in a simple way. I love nice. it. Man. I love it. You know, and, and would you talk about that? Like again, talking about all those different skill sets, right? because you pursued that right and and i think that that's to me that's helping translate even in your investing career man so and it's been dope man this, yeah this, this, is, this has been really dope. dope so many gems drive learn so much i know y'all taking some notes i know y'all learning a lot so yeah this has been an amazing yeah this so real quick, awesome. i'm gonna open up to the floor if y'all got a darren darren you you, you open to taking a few questions of course i was about to say something before we get to the questions though this is really wild how if i if i look back at my um my llc documents like i'm I'm, it was either october 11th or october 21st when i started my llc and now legit a year later i'm talking to y'all 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 are interviewing me what (laughs) what (laughs) huh (laughs) but yeah we can we we ask some questions but like this is really surreal right now that's all. Nice. That's all. This, is, this is dope. <laughs> That's man. so dope. I love it, man. I think you're gonna definitely with this episode. You're definitely gonna inspire a lot of people. Oh yeah, for um, sure. And, and the, the, the love and the comments and the support has just been amazing, man. So I, I again, I'm looking forward to big things for you. So I see your coach on here. She said, "Let's go," and she always speaking so highly of you, man. So yes, you know, all the time. So I'm super, super excited. I know you're gonna be closing that deal in a couple of days. This week is coming. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's coming. So yes. Yeah, man. So if y'all got some questions for Darian, I want you to put it in the chat. All right. And while you are about to put it in your chat, what I want to make sure you do, listen, y'all, make sure if you watching us on YouTube, make, don't forget to hit that, that subscribe button. Yes. All right. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Listen, y'all, you know, we always doing these, these lives. We doing the, you know, anything to continue to help you all out. And we want to be able to, you know, at the end of the day, you ain't got to give us a dollar, but you can hit that subscribe channel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's see.
Hey, I love it. The queen said, and it's only the beginning. Facts. I facts, love facts, it. I facts. Love it. So we're going to wait to see if we got some questions. And yes, don't not, be shy, y'all, because if not, we about to hop off of here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but one thing, man, like we talked about, you know, investing in your education. I want to go ahead and just, you know, put this up here because here's the thing, y'all. You know, Darren, he went ahead, he, you know, again, he started off with the course. Him and Brianne started off with the course. Um, and so make sure y'all text ELITE to 312-847-2544. And we give a 70% off our elite e-course, how to become a successful mobile home investor, all the things you need, all the strategies, not only that Darian and, and others have been able to uh, learn, but make sure you text elite to that number. Um, and we definitely want to get you started. And again, eventually, if you like, you know what, I need, I'm ready to work with coach. I'm ready to work with y'all. Then we got the elite fast track for you too, but make sure this is a great start because we want to make sure that you get a head start to your, to your education so again, text elite 312-847-2544. And we're giving you 70% off. We get crazy deals. You can't uh, you can't even go to Walmart and get these type of prices. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I fact. Got, Not for education, got, too, that you can turn around and make thousands of dollars. So yes, definitely tap in, take advantage, get your learning on so that you can go into the new year ready to take action. Yeah. Darren, listen, man. I think you set it on fire, bro. I don't know if anybody even got no questions. They probably they like, don't even know what the eggs, bro. They like Darian <laughs> answered everything. Like I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing to say. Like, bro, hit so many gems. Like, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, nah. This was this was dope, man. Like I said, I, I'm looking forward to it. You know, like I said, you, I, honestly, when we normally do these. You know, we we do. Um, you know, we normally interview people. You know, done you know, a few deals and things like this, but honestly, you know, just kind of giving y'all a sneak peek. We were on our alumni call yesterday and Darian broke down a system for everybody to use, broke down how he does his newsletters, broke down all the tools that he used. And that's what it's about, right? In the community. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, again, a whole nother strategy for people to use. And so, you know, man, that's why I'm like, I, I, I was excited for this, right? Because it's not yeah. about how many deals that you do, but it's about the impact. And you impacted the community yesterday in a mm. great way and gave a lot of people some 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 great game, man. So uh, oh, we got a first question for you. It comes from one of your classmates. <laughs> Lynette said, what was the most challenging part of the class and how did you overcome it when you actually did your first open house? I think my most challenging part of the class was honestly getting over the fear of uh, bandit sign. I mean, just having random people call my phone. Uh, granted, it's on Google Voice, so it's like a, like a phone separated from my personal. But it was still like that. I don't know who's going to be calling my phone. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be calling my phone, but we, we're going to answer. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, understanding what, what to say, like before you even have anything to offer. I was like, uh, I, I don't got that yet, but thank you for calling. Oh. <laughs> so working through that fear of understanding what to say and how to say it and when to say it with random phone calls from strangers who see your sign on the road. Like that was the main thing. And then getting over that, understanding what is the fundamental aspect of the conversation. If somebody's calling you, they either want to do one of three things, buy, sell, or rent. When they call you, ask what they're looking to do. If it's in English, in Spanish, or Portuguese, you're prepared. So when they call, answer. And if, they, if you can't answer the first time, call them back. Everybody that calls you, call them back and just say the same thing every time. Being, hey, are you calling about mobile homes? Cool. And then let them tell you what they need. Don't try to like jump the gun or over talk. When people, people love talking about themselves. So when you are listening to somebody talk about themselves, let them talk. Hey, hey, I love listen. it. 
I love it. I, I love it. I was I was hitting messing with Sharnice. He said he didn't know who he was calling. He said he didn't want to get no no like hello is this and he like Brienne no no this ain't this, this just somebody from the bandit sign baby this, this is it. <laughs> hello <laughs> he like he didn't want them calling he's like no nah, I want these randoms calling okay, my phone hello man. who is this <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, man, man, overcoming good. that fear just led to me being able to do open house where I'm just not afraid to call people and have them call nice. me. And then that just led to, yeah, let's do the open house, email, all that good stuff. So that main fear of, I don't know who I'm talking to, getting over that and yeah. understanding now I know what I offer and now I know what I can do for people and how I can help. Man, it was. I'm confident about it. Now I'm actually, you know, looking forward to call through the back and stuff. But that was that was the main the main uh main fear, I feel like the, the band design phone calls. Yeah, that's nice. Dope. So this one says, Do you plan on investing locally or out of your area as well? Uh, uh, I guess I would define local as just within North Carolina. So to answer your question, I'm starting with just North Carolina right now um i have roots in maryland so if you know going back to maryland that could be a future opportunity as well but for right now i'm just focusing on <laughs> getting this first deal cemented <laughs> but yeah staying statewide for right now man that's dope, nice man. that's dope I love it. I love it, man. No, hey, man, Darren, man, we truly appreciate you, King. This has been dope. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. You probably been, you know, it's been getting quiet because I've been had to push the mute button because it sounds like we over here they building up a, a new skyscraper over here. Um, but hold on, we got one more question for you. We'll take this last question. I think it's a delay on some of the, excuse me, some of the questions. What's your five year plan regarding mobile home investing? What's up, Miss Ron? That is a very good question. The quick answer is actually, yo, this is from the alumni boot camp that Byron, you, you taught us about becoming mobile home park owners. I hadn't even thought about that until you, you gave us that boot camp, um, that boot camp call. And I was like, it's, it's low key possible. Well, I know it's possible, <laughs> but like possible for me <laughs> and anybody that's connected to me. I was like, I don't know. Like this, this whole five year plan is funny. Whenever I think of five year plans and stuff, I'm at the end of my five year plan for my PhD right now. Mm. Now, full disclosure, I don't like long term planning. It that actually is a um, that causes stress for me because it's like, yo, after about a year of like, I can plan maybe a year out, but I like to focus more on like the daily systems and weekly mm -hmm. systems so that whatever system I have in place right now that I execute and flow in from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, that'll lead to the yearly plan, the yearly objective. Mm -hmm. And then that's working, you rinse and repeat it, and add tweaks here and there, and then it'll lead to the five-year plan. So I really don't have a five-year plan written down for you. And I'm not even going to say I wish I did, because that's not how my mind operates. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but is she gonna have you thinking about it now? He may go to the the, the pen, you know, pen and pad. Like, let me get that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I definitely, I'm the same way. I don't like to plan out too far either. I kind of focus day by day, hour by hour, and break it down like that, so that I don't overstress myself when I'm planning something so long, and then I get to that point and it didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely, I definitely understand that. It's like I'm not trying to get all my ducks in a row before I can get there. I'm just let me focus on these couple of ducks right here, and we're gonna make it happen. I promise. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh man, yes, 
Oh, man, yeah, this has been great. They've been over here drilling like crazy, man. We're going to have to shut this one down. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thanks y'all for joining us. We had some great questions. And until next time, we'll be back next Tuesday with another one of our phenomenal students. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you then. Yes. Peace. Have a blessed one. Peace. Peace.